changing love because you are the way maker. Lord, we give you all the glory because when we come with reverence before you, you fill our hearts with good things. Our eyes are upon you this morning. Lord, let us have manna from heaven. Amen. The food that we eat, the water that we drink and we thirst no more, the one that is able to equip us for the challenges of life so that when we have left this place, we will not become vegetable in the hand of the enemy. Amen. Father, we pray, equip everyone here today in Jesus' name Amen. that, Lord, mountains will move before us, Amen. that as you have overcome, so shall we overcome. Amen. We give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. God bless you. Nice indeed to be in Eindhoven, and I want to encourage you. It's always um, a good atmosphere, a pleasure to be around, um, and I bless God for what he's doing in the life of the church here, and the ministry of our pastor. Uh, Pastor Ballard and the other leaders that are working with him. Uh, and I pray that what God has started in your lives, he will perfect in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, just for us to know that we are taking a journey and we are not there yet. And by the grace of God, every one of us will make it to the end in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now we are looking at the word of God on the actionable faith. What did I say? <clears throat> Actionable faith is that kind of faith that does what? When you say actionable, what does it do? Now, praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you a story. When I was at the university, <clears throat> some of you have heard it before. Just pretend you never heard it. You understand? Because there are always new people in the church. I went to the university in the city, uh, and they have a wonderful accent in that city. You remember um, Shiboleth and Siboleth? You understand? It's still the same name, but the Ephraimites, when, when you ask them to call Shiboleth, what will they say? Siboleth. And exactly in our country, we had that tribe also. So if I wanted to say commissioner, what do you think they would say? Commissioner. <laughs> if I say, what is the show? What do you think they will say? What is the soul? You understand? Uh, so, so you are getting near. And then people came from all over the world to that university. And if you are making trouble as students, you know the way students will understand. Uh, I mean, they wanted action. You understand? So everybody in that place will be calling action the way the local people will call action. What do you think they will be saying? Action, action, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, let's use that for today. Amen. amen. That faith, what does it do? Action. Uh -huh. So it's not just a faith that is, uh, <laughs> that is quiet and doesn't do anything. Anytime you, say something, you see somebody saying, I have it, I have it, what do you tell them? Accent. We want accent here. Uh, of course, uh, you understand, you call it in your own name. That's why we are saying the actionable faith. And th th that faith says something, give me this mountain. In other words, faith is not something that is inactive. It does something. And it is very central to our Christian living. Uh, the beginning of walking with God and how we continue with God it's just by faith. There is nothing you can do on earth as a believer without faith. In fact, think about it, a believer. What does that say? You believe. And what is that belief we call? What is another name for saying you believe? I have faith. And when you have faith, you want to make that faith relevant. That's why the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because he who comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that faith, if you really want your life to count, your faith to be practical, make it actionable. In 
James chapter 2. I read from verse 14. James chapter 2, verse 14. The Bible says, What does it profit, my brethren? Though a man say, may say, I have faith and have not works. Can faith alone save him? What is the answer? No. no. So there must be action. Verse 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, verse 16, and one of you say to them, you know, this is our charismatic uh, way of uh, blessing people that doesn't take anything from you. Depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not the things which are needful to, to the body. What does it profit? Even so, in verse 14, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. So, and we are going to look at the life of an individual today from where we are going to learn practically about this actionable faith. His name was Caleb. He lived many years ago, but you see, after you have gone, by the grace of God, generations to come, if Jesus tarries, we'll be talking about your faith. And um, that faith should leave a kind of legacy behind that will touch the lives of other people. And so he had a practical faith Caleb and Joshua, you always remember them. We are going to learn from Caleb, and your life is going to stand in Jesus' name. Yeah. Is Ra Caleb in church today? Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. He's, with the, he's in the children class. So he's doing what Caleb's always do, impacting the next generation. And we are going to see that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Number one. The consecration of actionable faith. We are looking at three points. You want to see that kind of faith. What does it do? Now we go to Joshua. We have read it in our Bible reading. We go back to now Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14, reading from verses 6 to 8. When you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now I see some people are not there and they are shouting hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. The Bible says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in where? Kadesh Barnea. How old was he at that, at that time? Forty years old was I. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kedesh Barnea to espy the land, and I brought him word. What word did he bring? As it was, where? Amen. You know, we all can see the same data, the same information. It is what is in your heart that you are going to say. I mean, has it ever occurred to you, you are reading the Bible, maybe in the, during the Bible reading? And there is something in the Bible, and you miss, you, you, because you are occupied with something else. You see, the way our heart, our minds work is very wonderful. Sometimes you can see, and you can see a particular thing in the Bible, and you are seeing exactly something different. It's just because of the way the mind works. It's very important. And in verse 8, what does it say? Nevertheless, my brethren went up, that went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. Let's read the remaining part of that verse together. Want to go? Amen. I did what? Holy. Not partially. And that's what we see in this consecration of the life of Caleb. When we talk about the actionable faith, it's not just a one-time exercise. It is a lifetime expression. It's, it's something that, you know, you just go through. It becomes a lifestyle. And when it becomes your lifestyle, it doesn't matter where uh, you are. Uh, let, let me, I'm, I don't mean to offend people. But, but when something is natural to you, it becomes your natural language. You don't need to put it on. You understand? You know, nowadays, when somebody, people are going out, uh, um, and then they say, where is my artificial hair? So they put it on, and then they run out. But when you meet them in the kitchen, the artificial hair is gone. What happened? Well, I just put this one on to go out. Now, faith is not like that. I'm not blaming you for, <laughs> for, your, for your wig and other things. You know, men use wig, or women use wig. You know, nowadays, you don't know. And sometimes I pity, <laughs> I pity young men who want to get married. And because you just go out and then you are looking. And then you see the hair well set, everything set. You say, this is the person. 
And then you get married, and you get home. And this car, you know what they call car? Everything is bald. Say, so, ah! Oh, oh what happened? Well, that's what we married. I mean, you understand? Now, that's, that's for another day. Amen? Are we together? But we are talking about, now, this is Mother's Day. I, I think I've got into trouble. <laughs> I have got, I've got into trouble today. Pastor Valad, will you bail me out? <laughs> anyway, we have, we have ushers there, so <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, what you see here when we are talking about faith, it's not just something you put on and you put off. It's a lifestyle. You begin to walk by what? By faith. So it's an expression. And, then, and there are things we can learn from the consecration of this man. And when we talk about, you know, actionable faith, it never works alone. You know, in, in, in verse 6, the Bible says, he came with the people of Judah. That, that, you know, when you are talking about faith, some people think that that faith is always working alone. Jesus didn't work alone. He could if he wanted to. But you see, faith is always impacting the lives of other people. So, you know, Caleb, he came in the company of other people. That's what we see in verse 6. And not only that, actionable faith, it rests on the word of God. He held that promise of God. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? By the word of God. Faith is not just standing aloof. Some people say, I believe, I believe. Yes, what do you believe? If the faith is going to be genuine, you have to be able to say, this is what God has said, and I'm standing on it. So it's very simple. Sometimes people want to make it complicated for us. It's not necessary. And say, half it, half it. What is the content of that faith? Faith has substance. And that's why the Bible says, faith, now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you cannot just believe in vacuum. This is what um, I, I, I mean. Uh, maybe our wedding anniversary comes and I say, honey, or whatever you call them. You know, this wedding anniversary is coming. And it's going to be 20 years or 25 years. Uh, we are going to go to New York for the wedding anniversary. Now, for some wives, they will say, they will be telling other people, because the husband has said so. But so, for some wives, like if it will be my wife, she will know that my New York, does this man have money to go to New York like this? You understand what I'm talking about? So uh, it will be able to say, because if I say, if I, I would generally say America, we will go to America. And they know me because America is, there is an America here in very close to host. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, and then, you know, when you see America, everybody thinks it's America. And then you take the car, but where are we going? Are we driving to the airport? We are going to America. <laughs> you understand? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is faith has a reference to the one that is given the promise. It is your confidence in the one that is giving the promise that is going to make sure that, okay, this faith is standing. But if the person, if you don't believe the person that is making the, uh, the promise, or you have some doubts, then you are going to check it up again. Check it up. Has it ever occurred to you? You are in the car and you are driving, and then you are, you are, you are still checking, is the door locked? Is the thing, you know, it's a kind of feeling in the body. Or you are leaving home. And then maybe you are even traveling, you are going to the airport, and you're always checking. And your passport, everything is there, but the feeling is saying, maybe I left something behind. I, I don't know if, you, are we talking about angels here? No. Has it ever happened to you? Yes. You just feel something is missing. And, and nothing is missing. It's just your feeling. So faith is not feeling. I just feel that God is going to bless me. Mm -hmm. That's good. But on what? So it rests on the word of God. So number one, we have seen. It doesn't work alone. Number two, it rests on the word of God. Number three, it is constant. That man took the promise. How old was he when the promise came? 40 years. And when he was about to claim the promise, even the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness, <laughs> he still kept the faith. The five years of battle, he still kept the faith. He was 40 when he was given the promise. And at 85, he still said, yeah, I'm still here. He will still be there. Amen. 
because your faith is constant. And that faith, that actionable faith, it, it, it preserves. Because he got the promise, others died. But the Bible says Caleb and Joshua, they lived still. Do you know? Your faith will preserve you. Amen. You know, if God has something for you, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't, don't think, ah, maybe I will pass time. Maybe, maybe, maybe you are a, a lady and you are thinking about marriage. You are 25, you are 26, and then people are telling you the market will close. And everybody is going and they are making. I normally tell young ladies, you are not cheap. You are not a, a just a commodity. You're special. And for a woman of faith, God will arrange it. Amen. You will do your duty, God will arrange it. They shall not make haste that believe. Amen. You tell yourself, this thing is going to happen. Because you have a covenant with God. For somebody who has given her life or his life to God, you have a covenant. And when things are going on, your own miracle will not pass you. Uh, you can wait for God. Uh, you, waiting for man, you may have some question marks, but if you are waiting for God, the Bible says they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And that's the God we are serving. So uh, that, 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 that faith is going to preserve you. And then uh, lastly, the, the actionable faith is uncompromising and is yet charitable. Do you know this guy, uh, when he came, said, my brethren made me, they made the hearts of the people melt. But I brought Moses, the man of God's word, as it was in my heart. There were 12 of them. Ten were saying no. Caleb and Joshua, they said, yes. Though he was in the minority, he still said, this is what God has said, and you hold that word. And you know something I've been repeating over and over? That word of God is the incorruptible word, the incorruptible seed, which lives and abides for how long? Forever. Heaven and earth will pass away. You can take this word to the bank. It is the word we live by. It is the word we stand by. It is the one that when heaven and earth has passed away, that word remains the same. It is the word that even if, if, even if everything around you is falling away and you have nothing and you are destitute and you are naked, that word will still remain. And God in the midst of that decision will tell you, I am here. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. That's the God we are serving. And that is the word that you will take. But you know this guy, he didn't compromise. But everybody was saying, mm -hmm. he stood. And yet, he was charitable. You know, those people who said, um, no, 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 we cannot do it. They, they, are, they are giants. Oh, they, 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 they. He didn't call them rebels. Do you see in this place? He said, my brethren. You know, there are some people. They think that faith is to bring other people down. If somebody is not, uh, they, they call them uh, rebels. Do you know that Moses called them rebels? And because of that, what happened? He couldn't make it. You know, some people, they think, that, okay, God said it, I'm going to say, hey, you're not God. God can call people rebels because he sees their hearts. But he doesn't give you the license, even if they have sinned. He said, my brethren, let's be charitable. You know, some people talk about maybe the government, those bad people. Who put, who put the word in your mouth? Who has made you a judge? <laughs> This was Caleb, a man of faith. He said, I brought word. My brethren made the people afraid. They made their hearts to melt. But I brought the word as it was in my heart. My brethren. Even when people are going astray, oh, my brethren, don't let us do it this way. My brethren, don't let us do it this way. Not you backslider. You sinner. You whatever. No, it's not necessary. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the second point, the confession of actionable faith. Do you know, the Bible says, we believe, therefore, we speak. You're always going to say what you believe. Out of the abundance of the heart, what do you think will happen? Your mouth is going to speak. 
If you want to know what is in the heart of somebody, just let them speak, especially in unguarded moments. <laughs> you know, everybody can speak right when everything is okay. A politician can speak right when everything is okay. Everybody is angry, the, the, the farmers are angry, and then the, 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 the president comes there and says, oh, yeah, all, all those kind of things, and then begin to sort of some song, and then everybody is like, okay. And then he gets to the toilet or wherever, and he, remember, he forgets that the microphone is on. <laughs> Those worthless people. <laughs> and then the microphone will carry it. Yeah, that's the real president. You understand? That's the real man. The one that you see on the stage, that's the decorated one. In the moment of trouble, in the moment of, it is what is coming from your heart. In all this, Job did not sin with his mouth, with his lips. Neither did he charge God foolishly. And the them pressed on him. The them pressed on him. The them pressed on him. Pressures will come, but your confession will be positive in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. Joshua chapter 4. We read from verse 9. Sorry, Joshua chapter 14. Thank you, my brother. From verse 9. And Moses went. Sorry. And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly follow, followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said. How many years? These 40 and 5 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day, how old? Four score, 85 years old, verse 11. And yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. <sighs> 40. I won't ask you to raise up your hand, but if somebody is at 40, uh, the energy is still there. Amen. Amen. You can still jump up. But 85? Think about it. That's faith. Your faith will keep you young Amen. and keep you strong in Jesus' name. Amen. You see here, uh, uh, actionable faith is positive in its confession. You know, whatever you see outside, that is data. Yeah? That is just raw data. How you process it depends on the, on the software that is running in your heart. We cannot have the same smartphone, but you have different apps running on the same smartphone. Some people on their smartphone, it is a casino that they have. You know? You know, gambling. And it's still the same iPhone. Some people, they have Bible app there. Some people have pornography on their iPhone. It's still the same iPhone, but it is the app that is running that determines what comes out. That is how life is. The confession of your mouth, it is the app that is running in your heart. The app of faith is going to confess positively. But when you have the app of unbelief there, what do you think will be confession? It's a negative confession. <laughs> And when somebody is saying, praise the Lord, we went to church, we received it. <laughs> what kind of app is that? Unbelief. Sister, you are looking good. You know, the promise of God, <laughs> I know. It's good that I'm, it does it like that now, but I know something is going to happen. <laughs> I, I, it's, 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 uh, well, I know when it's going to positively, but I, I just have to be careful. Because something is going, going to go wrong. And when the thing goes wrong, I didn't I tell you. But you can change that. Something is going to go positively. Do you know, when, some, when things are going negatively around you, begin to tell yourself, and this, I, this is what I do. Now, I'm preaching to you. You don't think that uh, you know, the sun is always shining. No. We're all human beings. No? 
How can you do God's work and then God will be telling you be strong? <laughs> if there are no problems, you wouldn't be saying to be strong and with good courage. But I always, no matter what comes around, I will give testimony. I always tell myself, no matter. And remember, when problems, I don't know if, if you have noticed this, when problems come, at least in my own experience, they don't come alone. We bring his cousin, we bring his, uh, his brother, his sister. Uh, you know, it's just like some people when they are coming to this country. Once they come in, they invite other people and they say, come, 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 come. Huh? Huh? When they get married, they will say, okay, my brother will come. Uh, brother one, brother two will come. And other things like that. And then when they come, uh, when you come, oh, you have to be a pastor in this church. I mean, I'm talking about people that are important. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's the same way. When problems come, they don't come alone. They just they bring their cousins. Some people bring even their grandfather. <laughs> and then they, they bring, and then you say, why is everything happening? Don't you remember Job? While that one was still talking, the other one came. Why that one? I said, ah, ah, but people. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. And that's your faith. You say, no matter, you will give testimony at the end. Yeah. Keep on telling the Lord. I will give testimony at the end. Now, that's our faith. That is, who, who told us there will be no problem? If somebody says, believe in Jesus Christ, you will, it will be a bed of roses. They are lying. That then money will just be flowing. Have you ever seen that thing in the Bible? There will be affliction. There will be other things. But you will give testimony. Because after it all, Joseph did not perish in his affliction. Job did not perish in his in affliction. Naomi did not perish in her affliction. Eventually, consolation came. When you believe, consolation will come because we are serving the living God. God will not allow us to perish. We cannot perish. Praying people don't perish. We keep on believing. People of faith don't perish. We will not. You will not. Amen. So no matter what is going on, let your confession be, be you know, it, it, it will be positive. Actionable faith perseveres. It's enduring. Caleb held on to the promise. You see, the promise came in numbers. And I said their bread is departed from them. Their defense is departed from them. They are a bread for us. Amen. And, and, and he had not seen, but everybody saw the giants, and then they came and said, look, look, God has given us the promise. They are bread for us. We will overcome them. No matter what you see, that is data. Keep on saying, what has God promised? It will come to pass. Paul the apostle said, I know it's going to be as it was told me. No matter what, even in the midst of the trouble, Job was passing through fire. And he said, even if God slays me, I will still trust him. Because I know my Redeemer liveth. Sometimes darkness comes on your way. And you, you are, can I survive? You know the way I pray sometimes? I say, God, except you deliver me from this, I have no chance. <laughs> only God can solve this problem. I say, God, you are the only one that can. I can do this one. And God, he delivered. He is delivering. He will yet deliver. Your faith will be victorious. Other things may fail you, but that faith does not fail. It, it, because the word of God never fails. Your faith will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. At the age of 85, he said, I'm strong. Let the weak say, God will preserve you till his promises are fulfilled in your life. Amen. You don't need to get discouraged. Hey, you know, this guy... At the age of 40, the promise came. He never planned to spend 40 years in the wilderness. And yet it happened. And it was not his fault. It was the fault of other people. And he spent 40 years in the wilderness. Some people will say, why was I born into this family? That was the right family. Maybe it's not your fault. God is going to make something out of it. If it means that God is going to add years to you to compensate the years that have been lost, he will do it. I believe God. I, don't you believe your father? And say, God, time is going. Time is going. Time. I, I was thinking about Job. You, you, you know, the guy had children. How many children did he have that he lost? Seven. seven. And even if he got married at 20, having seven children, we are not told that there were multiple births. And one after the other. One, even if it's a factory, cereal, something. At least it would have taken some years. 
So maybe he was in uh, 40 or 50, or I don't know how old, the thing, uh, how old he was when the, the disaster came. The Bible says after all that, he still spent 140 years. Well, what are we talking about? If you are going to spend 80 years, and then you lost 20 years, I say, uh, and then now you are uh, close to 60 years. Uh, uh. So what, what, after 18 years, oh, the gate is closed. The time is closed. The what I would have done at 40. Now I'm 60. Who is waiting for old man, old woman? And God says, the 20 years you have lost, I'm going to add those 20 years and extra. <laughs> you see, when you believe, when you, are, when you are mad for God, you begin to make pronounce, uh, pronouncements that other people would think, is he mad? That's why they told Paul, <laughs> you are mad. <laughs> Much learning has turned your head. I know about his faith. Because you believe God, you become so radical, and you become angry with the devil. And saying, Satan, you can't do this to me. It's impossible. I cannot perish. I'm indestructible. You are indestructible. Amen. Nothing will crush you in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, the claim of actionable faith. We are going to echo verse 12 together, everybody. Now, just wait until you open to that. You know, Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. The first uh, phrase there, or whatever we call it. Are, are we there, my brethren? Yes. One, two, go. Now, therefore, give me this Hallelujah. Amen. Let's say it again. That is something. That is something. That is something. <laughs> now, therefore, <laughs> give me this cucumber. <laughs> now, therefore, give me this pencil. Now, therefore, give me <laughs> this valley or this plate. You know, there are some people, their faith is only working where things have been established. <laughs> you say, oh, I like this one. Yeah, it's just like some, you know, when people are getting, uh, want to get married. I don't want to somehow. <laughs> I want to marry the, the, the man. Everything must be set. You know, and then go and look and say, okay, does he have a car? Which kind of car does he have? Everybody can say, I have a car. Which kind of car? Okay, which kind of accommodation <laughs> is it? Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, okay, three bedroom, four bedroom, okay. Uh, where does he work? Uh, they say, okay, I work in uh, ASML. What are you doing in this? Uh, ASML? Because everybody can say uh, they are working at ASML. Where are you? What are you doing? Are you closing the gate there? Or you are <laughs> or what are you doing? Or they say, well, no, I'm working in a logistic company. Okay, what do you do in the logistic company? Are you a manager there or in the warehouse? Or They want to check everything because I, want, I don't want to suffer. And when everything is ready, and there is no answer there. I believe God. <laughs> I believe God. No, you believe you. You believe the, 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 the profession of the man. That's what you believe. And I guess I said, praise God. God is so good to me. But this one says, give me this mountain. If this man is poor, if this man is in the language of Mary Richard, if this is God, I just want your man. I just want your man. And then you see the man. I said, bro, yes, please. Which school did you go to? Uh, Abakaliki Primary School. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are in it together. Hallelujah. Amen. If that is God's choice, you get married to that man, give me this mountain. You are going to make something out of that marriage. They say it's not just a matter of, uh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not. Your marriage must be a covenant. <laughs> it cannot be different. Your life must be a covenant. It cannot be different. It's not just ready made. No, my life is not ready made. Give me that mountain. Suppose we are seeing, we want to, okay, we are sending people, okay, uh, you know, Tilburg, uh, Breda, uh, Dembos, and they are asking. And then we say, we want to send somebody to, you know, a village. I say, ah, <laughs> Pastor, uh, you can send uh, Sister Cynthia to that place. <laughs> For me, I want to go to a larger city because, you know, I will meet more. Where is the choice? Give me this mountain. I'm good. And that's what happened. Let's read from verse, uh, the, the remainder of verse 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Whereof 
The Lord spake in that day, for thou hardest in that day. Who are the people that were there? Anakims were there. And what happened to the cities? They were, they were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. What is going to happen? He will get the mountain. So Caleb came and demanded his inheritance. And he got the inheritance. But it was not a, going to be a cheap inheritance. Hebron. And he said, this place, the Anakims were there. I will drive them out. That man, at the age of 40, he, he already said it. So those 40 years they spent in the wilderness, phew, it just like deleted from his, his, his life. The strength was still the same. God will compensate you. And when they got there, he said, I'm going to get the place. I'm going to overcome this place. Sometimes we get our, our allow trouble to press us down. The fact that you are experiencing trouble right now does not mean God has left. Even in the midst of the trouble, be telling yourself, I'm going to give testimony. I'm going to give testimony. Because your trouble doesn't change the word of God. And the guy said, okay, I'm going to. Do. And the Bible says he was given. When you get home, go and read the remainder of the, of the passage. He drove out all the sons of Anakim from there. He did it at the age of 40, 85. He did it. You will do it. Amen. And after he had done it, when you get to chapter 15, they were dividing the land. He now said, yes, I have conquered, but I'm not just going to, to stay like that. You know that this guy, uh, Joshua had been promoted to the leader, and he was the only one left of that generation. All the others could even be his grandsons because he was at least 40 years older than they. And yet, they were all appointed as leaders. See, as the leader in Judah, he would have said, look at this grandson. Am I in the same level? He says, no, I'm going to do my, what God has commissioned me to do. I'm not Joshua, I'm Caleb. And then he still did it. And at the time, he now said, he who takes care of Sifa, him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. You know, the life of faith is a life of impact, affecting and influencing other generations. And then his, uh, was it his nephew? He came around and he said, I'm going, to, I'm going to get it. And then he gave him the reward. You know what I'm telling you? When your faith, actionable faith, has influence, it has impact, it leaves a legacy that other people will be able to say, huh, something happened, and they will be able to look at your life. And they looked at Hebron, and they will say, this Hebron, I mean, historical city, important city, people of faith don't get cheap things. And eventually what happened, that Hebron became a city of refuge. He didn't even live in the city. Amen. Only the suburbs. Because the city itself, where he had won the prize, it was chosen to be for the priests. Amen. Amen. Give me this mountain. Let's say it together. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. What, do you think, what do you think Caleb was doing when he was demanding from Joshua, give me this mountain? How was he? Was he sitting or standing or sleeping? Or, what, what do you think he was doing? Oh, so what, 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 we are going to ask God to give you the mountain. So, so what, what do we do? What do you do? You are going to tell the Lord. You are going to tell the Lord, give me this mountain. This mountain must move. God has inspired you today. God has inspired you today. There, there is a lot to do. There is a lot to do. To do for yourself, to do for God. Inheritance to... to you yeah, are going to tell the Lord, Lord... Something must happen in my life. You begin to pray. Oh God, today, 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 I want the software in my heart to be changed, to be updated. I want the language of faith, the actionable faith, the actionable faith, the actionable faith. You are telling the Lord, and you are telling the Lord, and then you begin to tell the Lord, give me this mountain. The mountain, you, what, what, what is your desire? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What is the object of your faith? You are telling the Lord, you are telling the Lord, you are telling the Lord, I want, I want it, I want it. I, I, I just don't want to stay. I don't want to stay where others are. I don't want to stay just at this low level. I want to make progress in my life. Oh God, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And you begin to pray logically. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, that's where you start from. And there is no victory where there is sin. There was no sin in the life of, of Caleb. Uh, 
in the congressional song, you know, the, the, the reign of sin can cease. Sin can be defeated because for this purpose, the Son of God came that he will deliver us. He will frustrate the work of the devil, which is sin. You are going to tell the Lord, Lord, I am going to overcome sin. I'll give me victory. Victory over sin. Victory over anger, over habitual sin, over besetting sin. Oh God, by your power, give me victory. Something is going to happen. Actionable faith. Actionable faith. You say, God, I, I don't want to stay in the low valley. I don't want to stay in, 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 the, low, in the low level. I, 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 want, I want the injection of faith today. The injection of faith. So that I don't only pray in church. All the problems that will come in life, I will be able to navigate through them, pass through them, and get my possession. Do you have any desire? Any particular desire? Anything in particular that your faith should... should, should, should uh, uh, should aim at in your place of work, in your personal life, in your marriage, in the family life, in your service to the Almighty God. There are challenges. I am going to tell the Lord, Lord, I, I, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay. And you are praying. And you are praying. Make sure you are praying now. And say, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. No matter how high, no matter how tough, I'm going to overcome. Remember, faith acts on the word of God. The faith that will endure is based on the word of God. What word of God do you have in your heart? Thy word have I hate in my heart. What word of God are you basing your faith on at this time? Is there any scripture you can quote and say because of this, Caleb was able to go to Joshua because God spoke to him. He had it. He had a promise. And he knew God cannot lie. God preserved him. What word of God are you putting your faith on? Are you putting your trust on? Faith is based on the word of God. Can you speak that word to yourself? Tell the Lord, Lord, you said this. And because you said it, I believe it. God, you have spoken this concerning me. You have spoken this concerning my family. You have spoken this concerning your people. And because you said it, I believe it. Quote that word of God. Your situation, there is a word of God for every situation of life. If you can believe it, it shall be so. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can believe, speak the word of God. Joshua quoted what God told him. And the Lord did it for him. It was not by his power or might, but he trusted the Lord. Believe. Actionable faith. I want you to just pray that you add action to your faith. I believe it's good, but what are you going to do? Caleb believed and he went forward to possess it. What has God spoken and what are you doing about it? Do you believe God? Pray that God will help you to act. Action is very important. If God said you possess the mountain, go there and possess it. You can't stay at home and get it. Even the manna, they had to leave their homes and go to the field to get the manna. It was a promise and yet they have to do something about it. Are you doing something? Tell the Lord from today, I will put it to action. I will not just say, I believe, I believe. I will work on it. God said, I'm going to work on it. And if you don't know what to do, ask God, Lord, teach me what to do. Faith without works is dead. You will add works to your faith. God will teach you what to do. And his grace will be sufficient upon you in Jesus' name. I want us to pray for our minister. Great grace upon his life. What a ministration. What an inspiration. What a challenge for us. Pray for grace upon the minister of God. That any virtue that has gone out of him, the Lord is going to replenish and give him much more. That those words that came, powerful, mighty, transforming words, God will anoint him more and more. The wife is here with us. Pray grace upon her also. Mommy is here in our midst. Great grace. Power and blessings that anytime, anywhere they will go, any place they will be, those words will be words of life. Remember, it was words that kept this man Caleb going. 
And once it was, the words came through Moses and he believed it. And let's pray for our pastor and our mommy that those things God has given him, given them, anywhere they go, the words of the Lord will be proclaimed through them. And it will be a blessing. And let's pray for this church and say, Lord, give this church this mountain. The church is not just established for anything. There's a goal. Lord, give us this mountain. In our region, there are many cities. We have Tilburg. Lord, give us this mountain. Tilburg is there. Then Boss is there. Arnim is there. Then Low Master, they are all there. Breda is there. Lord, give us this mountain. We will possess our possession. Finally, pray for everyone in this church that today, whatever God has for you and I, we will possess it. Pray. You will get it. You will have it. Your inheritance you will not miss. The purpose and the plan and program of God for anyone in this church, you possess. Your children, you possess them. Your wife, your husband, your job, you possess it. Your career, you possess it. That future you are expecting and desiring for, you possess it. You will get what God has marked for you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we are grateful. Words of life. Words of hope, you have spoken to us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Indeed, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Lord, we pray we'll build our hope on nothing but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I pray that your word will be all in all to us in Jesus' name. From today, we'll not just be emotional, we'll be factual. Our faith will have content. Our faith will be, God said it, and I believe it, and that settles it. I pray today, give us that actionable faith in Jesus' name. We will leave this place to act on the things you have spoken us about in Jesus' name. And we shall have the results like Caleb had. And our testimonies will abound. We pray you bless our pastor and the wife who are here today. Bless them abundantly for coming to bless us in Jesus' name. Wherever mommy and pastor goes, please let your grace go with them. Anywhere they speak, let the words carry power and bless your church. And Father, because of today, this church will possess our mountain. In the lives of families, individuals, any one of us, whatever the mountain might be, Lord, give us this mountain. And as we enable Caleb to possess, enable all of us to do so also. We bless you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray.